you weren't tired of hearing about yet another MCP registry launch, we've got one for you. Um, so this time we're gonna talk about the official MCP server registry. So um, since, since MCP's released, there's been a brand new registry released every week. We're here to work on consolidating some of those efforts and putting, it all, putting some of that work all in one place. The main takeaway that I want you to take away from what we're gonna talk about today is what is in scope for this official MCP server registry and what is out of scope. So we're gonna talk about the problems we are trying to solve and are not because we think there's gonna be a symbiosis between a bunch of like third party solutions and vendor driven solutions and then some of that stuff is going to get centralized into this uh, official registry. So first, who are we? We're members of the steering committee. My name's Tadis. I am from Pulse MCP. We were one of the early MCP server directories. Uh, and we've been running an MCP newsletter weekly since back near MCP's launch. I'm here with Alex from Block, who is uh, behind Goose, one of the early MCP clients. And we got Toby here, who's behind uh, GitHub's very popular, the most popular MCP server of all time so far, uh, the GitHub MCP server. Um, so, but this effort overall has been a, a big community effort. We've had a bunch of people contributing all kinds of things. Um, big shout out, especially recently to Avinash from GitHub who's been driving the technical development and also Connor and Sandy from VS Code who've been pitching into. We'd love to uh, get more people involved on that as well. So first, what are the problems we are solving for? What's in scope for this work that we're doing here? Third party registries, aren't able to get comprehensive server lists. So most registries and server marketplaces, they're using web scrapers of various kinds to get the job done. So they might, uh, you know, they'll, they'll get most like simple GitHub repos. If there's one MCP server in a, in a, in a GitHub repo, they'll, they'll know it mentions MCP, they'll scrape it, they'll run inference on it and put it into their registry. But a lot of these uh, web scrapers, they miss things like they're not set up to scrape GitLab or Bitbucket. They're, as soon as they hit like a complex mono repo or just like an MCP server nested within some other project, they'll miss that as well. And so then that's not even to cover like remotes, which might be closed source, like they're not on a, they're not on a repo anywhere. The result here is very fragmented data. You just don't have confidence that when you go to any one of these websites that it actually is comprehensive, that is that all the opportunities to run MCP servers that are out there on the internet. So furthering that fragmentation problem, when a server maintainer wants to get listed or just update their MCP server that they have out there, they, they have to go around to every registry on the internet. They might even have to sign up for an account. So you, you'll have to go to GitHub, you'll have to update the readme for your source code. You might, um, you, you, know, you might have to go to Smithery, create an account, claim your server, update the metadata there. You might have to email the Pulse team, be like, hey, like, we, we, need, we wanna update this. More fragmentation in the ecosystem. The third problem we, we want to solve with the centralized registry is the, this idea that client apps, they need a source of truth for installation instructions. So today there's this convention that every MCP server has a readme with a section that just says, hey, like here are the setup instructions, here's a, a JSON that you can copy paste. And the way that MCP clients are dealing with that right now is that they, one of two ways, they might take that readme, run inference on it and figure out like, oh, like this is how we bridge this uh, server to run in our, eco in, in our app. Um, or they just kind of kick the, the problem back to the user and say, right, here's a link to the readme, here's a rendering of the readme, uh, figure it out and get it into our JSON schema that's like custom to our MCP client app. So that's what we are solving for. And now here are some problems that we are not solving, but we acknowledge like are part of the discovery problem that do need to get solved somewhere downstream. One thing is source code storage. So our, our opinion here is that we're gonna meet the industry where it's at. Everyone is already publishing all the source code on uh, NPM, PyPy, like container registries. And so we're not, gonna, we're not gonna duplicate that effort or get people to change what they're doing. Continue to store it there, and we're gonna point to just what is the name of that package on NPM, and that is what you're gonna store in the centralized registry. Another thing that we're not gonna solve is this idea of advanced search filter ranking, et cetera. We wanna delegate this down to MCP client marketplaces. So we will have like basic search. So like if you're, you know, you're on a team and you're wondering, oh, did my teammate already publish our, our, you know, our MCP server? You'll be able to run a quick search, be like, and like a string search on the name and find like whether it's already there. But we don't, besides that, we just, we expect a rich ecosystem of downstream consumers to 
solve this problem for all the different personas and so on that we'll be trying to leverage the end MCP client app. So today, you have a lot of developers using IDEs and their solution for like this search and curation and ranking and sorting problem will be, might be very different than an MCP client built for salespeople that has very different needs and considerations when you think about like, what is the search intent of, of something that you're trying to find on the MCP server registry. So that's, those are the problem statements that we are and are not solving. And what does our solution look like? What are we actually building here in, with the official registry? The starting point for us, it's going to be a, uh, we're going to define a file that we're going to call the server.json file. And uh, this is, it's really going to be composed of four pieces and maybe more. We'd love to take more feedback. But the main four pieces are some basic metadata, like name, description, what does your server do? Second piece is going to be a reference to, like I mentioned earlier, all that source code and where, where it might live. Optionally, because you might instead have remote URLs, which is another piece of information that might exist in your server.json file. And lastly, structured installation instructions to solve that problem of everyone running inference on readmes in an unreliable way. We're going to have a structured way for everyone to run these local MCP servers as, as, they, as they need. Facilitating the, the publication process, we're going to have a CLI tool that works much like you're familiar with, with npm publish, but it'll, it'll, it'll have a publish command that allows you to publish that server.json to the centralized registry. So um, another piece of the, the solution that we expect to kind of exist as, as the ecosystem matures is that there, we expect there to be an ETL layer in between the official registry API and the MCP client. What that means is MCP client will most likely not query the registry directly on behalf of every user. So earlier I was saying like we're not going to have super sophisticated search functionalities, and that's because we expect this middle layer in, in there to uh, like the, this mirror of the original registry to filter, to be filtered and enriched with whatever data these downstream applications think is relevant. So for example, if VS Code wants to add user download counts for all VS Code users and like that's how they want to rank the most popular MCP servers that get returned back, they can add that proprietary data to their mirror. And then, uh, and that's something that like other members of the ecosystem, other consumers of the ecosystem, they'll have their own metric for. Um, in some cases, you might see uh, some apps decide to like outsource this concern. So like a third party registry like Smithery might partner with someone like Raycast and serve as that for them. So they can kind of split that solution into two if, if the ecosystem think that's a good way to do it. So that's what we're building. Uh, this has been a community driven effort um, and community involvement is key to making it a success in community buy-in. So please join in on the GitHub discussions for to add your opinions and use cases. Uh, I want to call out a couple things where we'd love some more input and, and feedback from folks. First one is, the que we, have, we have an open question of, will MCP client apps have all the data that they need? So we think that we have the, the server.json shape in place. You can go find it in the repos and, and review it. And, uh, or we have a, but we just have a potential blind spot. Are we collecting all the data that everyone needs? Is there anything that you, as an MCP client app developer, Need to need us to force to like suggest to server maintainers to include in that server.json file that would be really useful to you uh, as you run your app. Then another thing that we're trying to accomplish here is the question of can we reuse the API shape that we're doing in a kind of federated manner? Will third-party MCP marketplaces be able to use these API shapes? We'd love for everyone to standardize around these shapes that we're creating, and so. Um, you know, we're, we'd like to design this in a way that everyone shares an API surface. The way that plays out is that the official registry ends up having this kind of subset of the full uh, API surface, and then others can augment and enrich it in the various ways they see fit. But ultimately, you'd be, you should be able to, like, as a consumer, you should be able to compose registries and things like that or share SDKs. So we'd love to understand if you're building one of these downstream consumers and re-exposing it to other downstream consumers are we fulfilling all the needs that you'll need in a way that we'll be able to build on top of each other? So now I'm gonna hand it over to Toby and Alex to show us an end-to-end -end demo of exactly how this is gonna work. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, you're good. I'm good. 
Hi, everybody. We're going to try to demo a few of the things that Tadas just talked about. So um, mainly the command line tool to publish and this ETL concept. So again, so end user hosts are not hitting this registry directly. You can think of it as sort of a substrate to build value added registries on top of it. So to get started, we are running the registry with Docker Compose locally, the open source project. Let me get this over here. And Alex did a really good job making an ETL marketplace for Goose. And so what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate publishing one of these server JSONs for the official GitHub MCP server. And you'll see this reverse DNS with GitHub in there. Um, I am a GitHub employee. So using OAuth, we should be able to publish this. And I'll have permission to publish it into the registry. So if we use, oh, it's already doing it. Um, we will run it. And again, you'll see this, this JSON I just showed you. I'm going to tell it to log in. And I'm running locally the registry server. Let's copy this. Now, the OAuth flow should say, OK, I successfully authenticated. I published my server to the registry. If you look at the raw data, it's, yeah, pretty print. It's great, huh? <laughs> um, it's in there. And this is the Goose extensions. And it's, oh, now it's in there, too. I guess I, it did actually load it live. So uh, this is pulling from the ETL layer that Alex made. So it's like a proxy, a local proxy to the server. And if I install it, I'll go to the detailed page. Here, do you want to take over? Yeah, sure. I can drive this part. Um, yeah, so if you go to this page and then do that, then it's going to show us the command that it's going to run to run the server. Um, and just give it a simpler name for our settings, and then you want the money your access token. Yeah. yeah. So this part is the server needs an access token, his personal access token. And then. OK, so now back. No, just hit no. OK, do I, do I want yeah. that? Just hit no. Yeah, because you already did it. Because I already did it. Back. I think it wasn't finished. OK, so list my repos. And you can see it's using the get me, the search repositories. So all of that worked, thankfully. And it's very, uh, we were up until midnight last night <laughs> wiring it all together. <laughs> and just to demonstrate that this is multi-host, we did this as well on the VS Code side. So Harold and team built our own proxy on API Center and API Manager um, for browsing, again, based on this sort of substrate data in the, in the client. So here you can go and install directly inside of VS Code and do that. And you'll see that we have the readme data over here. This is not part of the registry spec to date. So this is an example of us adding additional metadata that we need for our application layering it in. We'll probably add stars and stuff like that that doesn't exist in the registry protocol so far. Um, and we'll see this over and over again with different hosts that have different demands for the types of data that they want in there. Yeah. I encourage everyone to bug ha uh, Harold about this later. Just swarm him. Yeah. <laughs> so the cool thing here is two clients, right? Mm -hmm. Getting the Two power. clients from the Getting same the data, two ETL layers as well, two separate ones. Yeah. And that's the demo.